Josh, we have grass. We do have grass. How exciting is it to see this place coming to life? Uh, it's nice. It, it's almost like the project goes in phases, right? Demo, dirt, shaping, and then grass. So it's kind of, we turn the page. After years of talks and concepts, the resurrection of Golden Gate Park Golf Course broke ground in March. It's a great little course. I'm going to miss it for the next seven, eight months. Coming off one of the wettest months in over a decade, the team of Jay Blasey and Josh Lewis got to work, peeling back the topsoil and unearthing the sand, carving out Blasey's master plan. Nobody likes to lose their place to play golf. The city and the First Tee have done a great job of putting together other accommodations and whatnot. But so far, uh, people have been excited about it. In April and from up above, it looked like a scene out of the children's book, Good Night, Good Night, Construction Site. Excavators, bulldozers, dump trucks, and skid steers working in concert to bring a new course to life. From my lens, having been a lifetime of golf, this will probably be the best nine hole par three course in America when it reopens. Uh, that'll be open for everybody, right? This is a community based project and anybody and everybody played here before we did this project. Anybody and everybody will want to play here when it's done and that'll probably grow by a factor of 50 uh, when we reopen. By May, most of the shaping was done, executed by three talented contractors called in from and off other projects around the country. They were Robert Nelson, Brett Hochstein, and Justin Carlton. I've did a lot of stuff behind private gates. It's gonna rank up there with one of the better projects I've ever been on. Not long after the shapers were done and a state-of-the-art irrigation system was in place, May was also the month Lewis got started hydro-seeding Golden Gate Park's future. They went with a four-way blend of fine fescues on the fairways, and the greens are a 50-50 blend of two different types of bent grass. With a good agronomic plan in place, it should be next to no chemical use out here. And the water should be extremely limited, me, as it relates to this, with the deep sand soils that we have, and then the fine fescues will root 18 to 24 inches down. After raising $2.7 million in private funding, by the end of August, Dan Burke's dream was becoming a reality. Certainly a ton of excitement, you know, um, just from the visual aesthetic of looking at the property as dirt and then sand um, and looking at that moonscape for several months, you know, consecutively, now seeing some grass, which gives it a completely different aesthetic look visually where you can start seeing some of the contours that are part of the design and it's starting to actually look and feel like a golf course. I would say excitement is the number one, you know, emotion uh, coming out here almost every day. To get the job itself was a big win for Blasi, but while standing on new grass, it was clear he was bracing himself for the best part of his job, unveiling their work to the public. For me, there's kind of different milestones in the process when you kind of are first routing or first figuring out kind of where everything's going to go. That's an exciting part of the process. And then when you get approval to do the project and you get started, that's uh, exciting. When the grass goes down, that's exciting. And then when you open. So there's kind of these kind of four different thresholds, but it's we're at a great point right now. Meanwhile, the clubhouse has remained an issue. Beyond the control of Burke, Blasey, or Lewis, there has been supply chain issues and bureaucratic speed bumps. What once was an early October opening has been bumped back to February 2nd. 
We're in communication with the city and the contractor they've hired to do this building, and we're trying to sync that up because it would make perfect sense to open the new clubhouse and open the golf course simultaneously from logistics, from community. I mean, all reasons would point to try to do that. And it's right now it's aligned pretty closely. I mean, if it gets skewed off a week or two weeks on one way or the other, you know, we'll have that discussion of whether the golf course is ready to go and the clubhouse isn't. Do we want to open? Does it make sense to deal with tough logistics and the parking lot? And where would we have people check in and things like that nature? Um, you know, uh, right now it's looking like it could be synced up pretty good, but if it doesn't, you know, we'll try to work with the city to make a good decision. In November, you could say the course was done. And although the fine fescue was still patchy in places, there was limited preview play for a few industry insiders and loyal locals. Gary Giabini has been playing Golden Gate Park since he was five. Original impressions are, I think that if you had to put the redesign in a word, it's brilliant. Uh, it, the, the course itself with all the dramatic changes that Jay has implemented, you know, the clearing out of the course, the, 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 the visuals that you have from all the greens, they're extraordinary right now. Uh, the holes themselves, while they shouldn't be measured by the yardage on the scorecard, the action and the excitement comes when uh, you get up around the greens and you miss the green, or you have that 50, 55, 60 foot putt. There are no guarantees, despite the you know, relatively short lane. To hear from somebody who spent uh, decades out here and a lot of time and, and money invested into this place say that he thinks it's brilliant, that he loves it, that he wants to come back and continue to play, it means a lot. Haley Moore has been playing Golden Gate Park for 20 years. I do live, like I said, around the corner, so walking by, peeking through the fence, and I think it's outstanding. I love the undulation, I love the bigger greens, less trees. I think it's going to be fabulous. To hear that uh, she's been able to come out and uh, she can notice and embrace all the little refinements that we've made and can see how the golf course could be more fun and more playable for, for her group and other groups, it, it makes you feel good. Joe Curran has been working at Golden Gate Park for 10 years and is currently the general manager. We always knew this place had great potential and it was always like a hidden gem and I think um, Jay and Josh and the team have really just tapped into that and have really taken advantage of, of what we have here. It's always been a, a, a cherished part of the community so to, to watch people who've been here who have loved this place for years and years come back and say wow it's still the Golden Gate Park that I knew and loved but it's even better, it's more exciting, there's more interesting shots to hit, uh, the vistas are, are amazing and things like that. To, to, to us, that's really satisfying because we feel like we struck the right balance. Meanwhile, as the project comes to a close, not unlike Blasey, Josh Lewis is wrestling with mixed emotions. Good news is we've got to the, at least close to the finish line on a really successful project for a great group of people. And I think the golf world's gonna love it. Um, bad news is this has been a pretty great place to come to work for seven, eight months. So, um, you know, it, it's tough when you kind of set a precedent with a site like this and a location like this and, you know, you go somewhere else to work. I think, you know, Jay and I are talking about a project in Minnesota that I've got to work in in the winter. You know, it's like, you're going to love it. It's going to be awesome, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a little cold. So this is, uh, this is at all the, all the feels for sure. One of the exciting points in the process is right now when it's time to kind of hand it over and let people come out. And I love to, to just spend a day or spend a few days and just kind of find a, find a tree or find a little, uh, a little nook and park myself there and just watch people. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's golf, which is our livelihood, but, you know, there, there are more important things in life. But to watch uh, fathers and sons or grandfathers with their granddaughters come out and put their arm around each other, a group of guys or gals come out and, you know, they're making memories. And to think that you, know, you played a small part in memories that will last a lifetime is, uh, is pretty satisfying. So it, it's an exciting time for sure. The whole project, I think, is, is a wonderful and successful collaboration between the city and, again, First Tee, and it is, it's exciting, and I think a lot of people are going to recognize the dramatic changes, the thoughtfulness that uh, 
that Jay put into the course design and uh, the success he had with the overall project. Well, versus before, I felt like it was pretty straightforward, you know? Your goal is to hit a very, before the greens were posted stand, so small. And I feel like here, the greens will be more challenging because they're so big and undulated versus, you know, okay, I have to hit this little tiny spot. You have a little more flexibility, but I think the putting will be more difficult. Probably the spot that pops out the most is that high point where we have a tee for number two, a tee for number five, and a tee for number seven. That's a spot where you can see the ocean, you can see all the way across the whole golf course, uh, you can see parts of the city itself. And so that, and that was all kind of covered up before by a lot of the vegetation that was here. So I think that that's a spot to maybe take a moment, uh, again, hopefully maybe grab a beverage and toast with your friends and, and, and enjoy the journey from that spot. The special part about this for me is I feel like we've set this property up for many, many decades to come infrastructurally. And so what we've done here, I think will stand the test of time. The architecture is, is timeless and the project itself sets the golf course up really well um, for the city of San Francisco, for you know, outer Richmond, outer sunset, the first tee. Um, as far as a spot on the property, I, I really gravitate to the 8th tee. I think it's a neat spot to see kind of the property in reverse and then the way things have opened up, listening to the ocean, you know, the even though maybe there's not kids playing the golf course at the time, you can always hear the kids down on the soccer field, so it kind of, you have that connection, you know, you know what's, what's coming. This is a win, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the, the, whether you live in San Francisco or a citizen of the city, or you're a visitor. This is gonna promote golf in the city. And not only golf, you have all the first tee kids coming out here. What a wonderful venue and satellite to uh, the facility over at TPC. I mean, for them to come out, have an opportunity to play, something that's manageable for beginners, etc. cetera. Uh, it, it's, it's invaluable. And, and it's, a, it's an asset that'll be here for 50, 60, 70 years. We're so excited. I have a core group of ladies that I met here playing. They started a ladies league. because There were always women that wanted to play, nervous to play by themselves or play with other men. So they started a ladies league and us four women are now best of friends. We talk almost every day. We have monthly dinners. We're at each other's homes. And now we're just like, let's get back to golf.